In this video, we're gonna build a node app with a very CPU intensive task that blocks the main thread. And then with the help of the node's multi-threading capabilities and worker threads, we're gonna offload some of that heavy computation onto different threads to make our node app even faster. If you're ready, let's get started. All right, so I wanna give you a quick sneak peek into our node app that we're gonna be using. So first of all, it's an Express server. And as you can see, Express is installed as a dependency in the package.json. And we also have two routes. The first one is called non-blocking and the second one is called blocking. And to demonstrate that, I would suggest to start the server. So I'm gonna run node index.js and app is listening on port 3000. And our app looks very simple. And I'm gonna trigger the first URL called non-blocking. And as you can see, it works perfectly. But now the second one, the blocking one, and it gets stuck. But the problem is when I try to run the non-blocking one again, this one also gets stuck. Well, the problem is the main thread is now clocked. And let's look deeper into our routes. So we have a controller which returns 200 and a custom message. And for the blocking one, we have some heavy computation. So we're iterating 20 million times to increase the counter. And then we return the result of the counter. Well, this is actually a lot. And I would suggest to dig a bit deeper and look into our blackboard to understand what's happening. So we have a main thread in our node application, which is running in the V8 engine. And the V8 engine implements a library called libuv. The libuv library lets the node application to spawn some extra hidden threads. So I'm gonna throw a second one and I'm gonna draw the third one. But in total, we have seven threads, including the main thread. Two of them are reserved for garbage collection and four other are respond whenever needed. But when I say whenever needed, they are usually respond when we have some IO operations like DB queries, when we write or read files, and when we have some network data transmission. So basically when you make requests from your node application. Well, that's when people say node is asynchronous. That's actually what they mean. When you do IO operations like input output operations, then the node is actually asynchronous. But let's imagine we have a database. I just want to demonstrate how this asynchronous node works. So we have a database and some client makes a request to our application. So this is the arrow that a client makes. And we're gonna go and fetch some data for this client from the database. And while this database is processing, we are having a second client that also make a request and we return some data right away to the client because it's quite a simpler request. And then the database returns the result and now we are able to process the data and return it back to the client. So this is how the asynchronous nature of Node.js works. But none of this works when we are dealing with CPU bound tasks and which are not asynchronous and those are not able to spawn extra hidden threads. So as you can see, now our main thread is completely clogged as we saw in our example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply have another client and this client is not gonna be able to access anything. As you recall from our example, the non-blocking URL was not working either. So the solution is, as I said, to spawn them manually. What we're gonna do is we're gonna simply have a copy of this thread. And let's say we also have another copy and then you can also communicate within your threads. So let's say those copies are communicating back to the main thread and you finish your computation that you need. And then as you are communicating back, the workers are gonna be freed and the main thread is also gonna be free and you can access or process your tasks much faster. So in this example, this is the worst case that we have. And I would suggest to actually try to spawn a new thread. For this, you simply need to create a new file and I'm gonna call it worker.js. And inside the worker.js, what we actually, let me stop the server. Inside the worker.js, I'm gonna declare a constant and I'm gonna grab something from the library. And I'm gonna grab parent port 
and I'm going to grab it from, so let's say require worker thread. All right. So little heads up, this article is completely based on Stanley's article on digital ocean. So if you want to dive even deeper, please go check it out. And now I'm going to declare a counter. And actually, why do I do this? I can simply copy it from the index.js. And let's copy the for loop. And I'm going to go back to the worker.js. And I'm going to paste all of this here. And now the question is, what do we do with a parent port? Well, the answer is simple. We're going to use it here and dot post message. And we're going to send the counter. Well, post message is the way you communicate with your main thread from a worker or from a different thread. As simple as that. Now we go to index.js. And obviously, we need to import something related to workers here. But first of all, let's remove this logic because it's redundant now. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to import so const and I'm going to grab worker. And it's going to be the same way require. Yep, from worker threads, right? Okay, now that we have the worker, we need to write some extra code inside our blocking route. What I'm going to do is simply declare a new variable called worker and new. I'm going to create a new worker class. And what you need to pass in is a URL to your worker. So dot slash worker dot JS because it's in the same directory. And now that we have access to our worker file and we created a new instance of it, what we can do is actually listen to some specific events. So I'm going to write worker.on message. And this event is called message whenever you get a message from a thread. And we have a data coming from it. So it's going to be an anonymous function, an anonymous error function. And we're going to return the whatever message our thread gave us with a status of 200. So it's going to go back to the client and send. And let's say we're going to have the same message as below. So I can actually just copy it from here and paste it here. And since counter is now data, I'm going to simply replace it with data. Okay, cool. Well, there's another event as well, just to make sure that our code is secure. I'm going to copy it paste it. And the second event is going to be called error. Just to make sure that we are catching the errors, I'm going to take the error parameter. And let's say I'm going to send 404. And I'm going to send a different message. Namely, I'm going to say an error occurred. And I'm going to send the error that we got above. All right. Okay, so everything's simpler until now. All right, we also need to delete this one because we're no longer needed. How about we save it? and restart our server and check how it works. Okay, so node index.js and it's running and we go to the browser. Okay, let's check the non-blocking first. Okay, everything works again. So all good. Now let's check the non-block, sorry, the blocking one. And okay, well, it is still blocked as expected, but now the non-blocking is not blocked anymore because it's running on the main thread and our other thread is taking care of the heavy computations that are going through the blocking URL. Okay, we already have some improvement, right? And this one is finished in the, in the normal time. All right, but how about we optimize it even more? Of course, you don't have to, but I think I would like to optimize it even more because it takes kind of too much. Well, what we're going to do is actually we need to find out how many cores we have because all of this is done with a parallelism. So in order to run our uh, commands in parallel, we can find out how many cores we have. So I'm going to write sysctl minus n hw dot ncpu to find out how many cores my laptop has. So I have a Mac, and this is the command that you write to find out how many cores you have. If you're running Linux, please simply write np rock to find them out. Or if you're on Windows, you can also write echo uh, percent sign number of processors percent sign. All right. So as soon as you find out how many cores you have, 
this is the maximum number that you can utilize to run your threads in parallel. Well, this sounds simple. So I have eight, but I want to use only four of them. Let's keep this in mind. So what I also want to do is simply create a different file so that then we have can benchmark them against the original one. So I'm going to call this index minus, um, let's say four workers. All right, and it's going to be a JS file. All right, I think the code inside this file is going to be pretty much the same as in the index.js. So why not go and copy it? But also we need to create a second file for the worker itself. So I'm going to call it for workers.js. And I think it makes sense, doesn't it? Let me know in the comments if it makes sense. Sometimes naming is hard in programming. Okay, so what are we going to put into for workers? As I already said, it's going to be pretty much the same code. So I'm going to copy everything here and paste it here. But the only thing that is going to change is that now we are receiving some parameters from the main thread. All right. So I'm going to use worker data for that. And it's a, a specific variable that is very specific to worker thread that we can use here. So I'm going to divide our 20 million by worker data and a specific parameter that let's call it threads. Uh, yeah, thread count, right? Or just thread, thread count. And now whenever this is deleted, so it's going to be 5 million, we're only going to make 5 million iterations. And now send those iterations back to the main thread. All right. And I'm also going to copy everything from index.js and paste it in index for workers. And of course, we need to make some modifications there, but they're going to be pretty cool. So first of all, let's declare how many threads we want to use. And it's going to be called thread count. And as I said, I only want to use four, even if I have eight, because why not? Okay, the non blocking is going to stay the same, but I want to declare a function, which is going to create our workers. So let's call it create worker. And inside this function, we're going to have something very interesting. So I'm going to return a promise. All right, so I'm going to write new promise. And inside the promise, as you already know, we resolve and reject the promises. So I'm going to write resolve and reject. And this anonymous function is going to do all the job for us. So inside the function, what I want to do is again, create a new worker. So const worker equals new worker. So we create a new class for it, of it. And as just like in the previous example, I'm going to write a path for our worker file. So dot slash index, oh, not index, just for workers dot JS. All right, cool. And now, again, just like in the, in the previous example, we're also going to define the uh, li event listeners. But first of all, we also need to send the data to the worker. And if you remember, we use worker data in the worker thread itself. And we're going to pass this variable called thread count, and it's going to be equal to the constant variable that we defined above thread count. Is everything clear so far? I hope so. If not, please go back in the video and watch it again. And now, as I said, we're going to create two events. So let's basically grab them from your index.js. And I'm going to copy this, actually, this both, and I'm going to go and paste it in index for workers.js. So they're going to stay pretty much the same. I don't think we need to change anything here. And inside the blocking controller, we are simply going to delete these two because we no longer need them. But we need something else because we declared a promise, right? So we need to take care of those. So I'm going to declare a new variable called worker promises, and it's going to be an array of promises. But for now, it's going to stay empty. And now I'm also going to declare a small for loop. So for let i equals zero, and i is going to be less than threads count because we want to push for promises inside the array. And obviously i plus plus. And inside this, as I said, we are going to reference worker promises array and push the function that we declared above. Okay, so the function is going to run and it's going to return a promise and it's going to be pushed inside the array. But now you might ask, what do we do with this array? Okay, this is where the interesting part comes into play. So I'm going to declare another constant called thread results. 
and it's going to be equal to uh, an await. And the reason we are using await, or the reason why we can use await is because of this async keyword. And as you can see, the other route doesn't have this async keyword. So we're gonna use await promise dot all. And what we're gonna put inside is simply the array of worker promises that we declared above. So promise dot all is gonna take care of the promises that we have and wait until all of them finish. And as soon as all of them finish, so these are going to calculate them separately, the counters. And as soon as every worker is promised, sorry, every worker is finished within a promise, we're gonna need to have a total. So what I'm gonna do is simply write thread results, zero plus thread results one, and thread results obviously two, and plus thread results three, and plus thread results four, and plus thread results five. That was actually a joke, I hope. I gotcha. We only have four threads, right? So we don't need a four or five. We already have four indexes, zero, one, two, and three. This is gonna be our total knowledge. And what we're gonna do as a last thing is simply send this to the client. So result status 200, and I'm gonna send this message. So send, and I'm going to copy it from here and paste it in my blocking controller. I'm going to paste it here and change data to total. Right. I noticed something that you might have also noticed. So within our promise, as I said, we need to resolve or reject something, right? But apparently we are not doing anything. So this is where a bug could have happened. So we actually have to change this to resolve and resolve the data instead of returning something to the user. Right? So like this. And within the error, we're gonna reject it with an error message instead of sending something to the user. That was completely wrong. I'm sorry about that, but now everything looks clean. Hey, looks like it's gonna work. And why not save it and try it out? Okay, I saved it, prettier, formatted everything for me. Very cool. Now I'm gonna start index. No, actually node first. And node index. Oh, I cannot type again. Very usual. <laughs> Okay, index minus four words. Now our app has started and let's go check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna trigger the non-blocking one just to see if everything works, it does. Now the blocking one. Okay, it's blocked for now and, but it's finished very quickly if you compare it to the previous times, right? And this one is working as well. So as you can see, when you separate your threads into four and do the computation in a parallel, it works much, much faster, but I wanna benchmark it. So I'm gonna run the first, our, the first example with index.js and I'm gonna create a new terminal just to curl it. So let's clear it and I'm going to write time curl and I'm basically gonna pass. So I'm also gonna indicate that it's a get request and I'm basically gonna pass the URL that we had in a browser. So HTTP localhost three, not 300, but 3000 and blocking. All right, let's see how long it takes. I'm gonna pause the video here. All right, it took us 18 seconds. That's quite a lot, right? But I'm very curious how long it's gonna take us with four different threads. Let's check it out. So I'm gonna stop the server and I'm gonna run node index for workers.js. Okay, now let's run our benchmark again. Okay, let's see. This one must be very, very quick. All right, four seconds and something. This is a big improvement, guys. And that's how you use multi-threading within Node.js. So now you can go and make your APIs even faster. Hey there, it's me again. I just wanted to quickly say thank you very much for watching this video and smashing the like button. And if you want to stay up to date with such cool topics, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss whenever a new video is out. And I'm going to see you in the next one.